I'm going to start by asking each of you to calculate how old you will be in the year 2050. Hold that thought. I hope not. <laughs> Hold that thought. I was born in Colombia, arguably one of the best coffee growing regions in the world, as shown by red on this slide. By the year 2050, Colombia will not be a coffee growing economy. In fact, more than 60% of the world's coffee growing ability will be gone by the year 2060. I will be 90 in 2050, and I hope to still be around. They tell us climate change is about sea level rise. They tell us it will happen in our children's generation. Climate change is a fundamental change to our ecosystem, to our way of life, and it will happen in our lifetimes. So how do we delay this future? In my mind, we have to put ourselves on a really strict carbon diet and only use carbon where we absolutely have to. I would argue that energy can already be carbon free. However, transportation will still require fuels, especially aviation, which will require it for decades to come. All of our household goods are made from carbon. That baby buggy, those children's shoes, we have to reserve carbon for those things. And I would also argue that we must stop taking carbon from a one-way street from the ground to our atmosphere. And instead, we have to focus on recycling carbon. And that's exactly what we do at Lancet Tech. We recycle carbon. You're used to the fermentation of sugar. You're used to getting beer because the yeast can ferment sugar. What our organism does is it ferments waste gas emissions, like from a steel mill, like from a refinery. And it recycles that carbon, and instead of letting it up in the air, it turns it into ethanol. You can use that ethanol for your car, and we've learned how to convert that ethanol into jet fuel. And next year, Virgin Atlantic will fly our fuel on their plane, showing that recycled carbon can be used for aviation. We're also learning how to convert those waste gases to chemicals that will eventually end up in your yoga pants and your children's <laughs> toys. Yes, I guarantee it. And this sounds like science fiction, I know, but it's not. This is a picture of a 100,000 gallon per year demonstration scale facility that we built in China at a steel mill. It operated for multiple years and we're now building our very first commercial unit at the same location. And there we'll produce 60 million liters of ethanol. You can already see the bioreactors and the distillation unit in place. We're doing the same thing in Belgium. We're doing the same thing in India. You can see we're going across the world in a variety of different industries with a variety of different gases. And of course, none of these guys would build the stuff unless they could recycle that carbon in an economic way. This is creating value from waste. If I could use 60% of the world's carbon gases today, we would be able to do the equivalent of taking 55 million cars off the road every year. That's impact. And in doing that, we have to put a lot of steel in the ground, which means we can create a lot of jobs, construction jobs and operating jobs. So I hope I've shown you flu stacks, carbon waste. It doesn't have to be a liability. Pollution is a choice. We can prevent this. We can recycle that pollution to make products, cleaning up our air, and making it easier to live in this world. Thank you. <laughs>